Patrick, can we please have a one word prompt? Seafood. Seafood. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. That's still the one food I'm picky about. I can't bring myself to get over it. I'm, tr- I'm trying to venture All out seafood? more. I, I, well, I guess I should say I am on the seafood diet, and that when I see food, I eat it. <laughs> so stupid. God, awful. We're just going to leave with that. Okay. Hey, welcome to the Over Talking Podcast with your host, Ken and CJ. Say hi, CJ. Love when the guest is shaking their head at me right when we start. Uh, real, just real bad. Uh, this is the show where we talk over TV shows and movies as chosen by our guests. And this week we watched Clifford. Not that one, though. The other one. Not the big red dog. Not the big red dog. The, the Martin Short one where he's a 10-year-old boy. We'll, we'll get to that <laughs> in a second. Uh, CJ, what do you eat any seafood? Oh, boy. I don't think so. I've, I think I've tried it all. I've tried the calamari and not a big sushi person. I can kind of do like lobster and shrimp a little. Okay. That's not bad. Do you like the one where it's like just a fully alive octopus? Yeah. That's my favorite. Yeah. I like to kill things in front of me before I eat it. (laughs) I like when it's still wriggling in my mouth. That's, that's the favorite. I want to see the the life leave its eyes before I (laughs) could. Great. Great. Uh, Meg and I started watching Alone again. Do you know that show? The Survivalist one? Yeah, The Survivalist one yeah. where they're just left alone and they have to film their own show for them, basically. Yeah. And yeah, they just hunt and, and kill things and literally watch uh, the life leave like deer's eyes and things like that. And reminds me that I could never go hunting personally, but... Nope. Sure can't. No. No way. But it's awfully tasty. I'll eat it, but <laughs> I can't. I can't watch it die. No. <laughs> Ken, I can't wait any longer. We have a fantastic guest, so I want to bring him in right bring off Bring him mic. on. This week, we are joined once again by, you know him as the producer of the George Lucas Talk Show. I, I consider him kind of a third host. I don't know how he feels about that. but And also the producer of the Untitled Improv Project, which you can catch in the LA area, or like me, you can stream online. It's Patrick Gardner. Hello. Woo. Welcome back. You make, thank you. You made the seafood diet joke, and I was like, can I leave before I've been introduced? <laughs> yeah, seriously. I saw your hand going for the leave button. Nope. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Couldn't find it quick enough, though. Awful. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, very happy you let me talk about this movie. <laughs> yeah. Before thank we you. get to that, do you eat seafood? I do. You seafood? I do. I don't like sushi. Okay. Um, basically, if it's raw, I don't want it. Yeah, uh, because I feel like it's so easy just to cook it. So why don't we just cook yeah. it? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I don't want oysters. I don't want sushi. Those are kind of the big ones. I'm not big on octopus or like calamari stuff. Hmm. Uh, it's a little too chewy for me. And also they just feel so smart and I just don't want to think about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's tr- truly like the one animal where I'm like thinking about that while I'm eating it. You know what I mean? Or like when it gets suggested i don't think about it for pigs or cows or chickens or whatever it's just octopus i don't know why yeah octopus and dolphins for me yeah i'm eating dolphins yeah yeah yeah. that makes sense that makes sense but give me uh give me scallops any day give me shrimp any day give me salmon you know all about it fish fish and chips i love it i love it i'm trying to come around on salmon I, I, yeah. my wife is a big seafood eater. And so I'll, I'm at least trying to like, okay, I'm going to try a bite of your thing to see if maybe yeah. whatever combination this is, I'll like that. It's the least fishy fish, I yeah. think. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're not going for just like a, you know, a, some kind of white fish or whatever. And, and you can season the hell out of it, I think, where you will forget that you're eating it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, but it salmon's good. See, I like sushi still, yeah. but I'm right at the border of, Almost gagging when I eat it. Yeah. If it's like yeah. straight up raw salmon on a sushi, I'm like, oh man, I mainly go for like the crab stuff, which is sure. cooked and, and everything. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. If it's cooked sushi, I'm I'm fine. Or if it's like vegetable based stuff, I'll eat it. But I always whenever someone suggests that we go get sushi, I'm always very disappointed. <laughs> I'm always yeah. like, I guess I'll figure something out. This might be a little out of left field, but do you guys think dinosaurs would be tasty? Great if you question. were to great question. Right? Probably. I think about this all day. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, and I see where you're going with this. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I think I they probably would about. be. It, it would probably be, although we don't really eat reptiles. I have to imagine dinosaurs yeah, why not, still though? have a lot of like fat and muscle, though. I can't imagine they're still just skin and bones being that big. No, they got some meat. I am going to Google what do lizards taste like. 
<laughs> Probably like chicken, like everything else. There's got to be like some obvious example of lizards that we eat, right? Like how, we can't not eat lizards. People do. Dem- I just say I don't think it's common. <sighs> okay, domestic lizards taste like a chewier chicken. See, okay. like chicken, everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's our comparison for all of it. Yeah. Man, I set up this segue, but I can't get there, and I, I don't know how to how to link it. But we're going to talk about Martin Short's Clifford coming up on the Over Talking Podcast. The only thing worse than being a 10-year-old boy is being his uncle. You wouldn't lie to me, would you, Uncle Martin? Because if you did, I'd be so angry. I don't know what I'd do. Martin Short and Charles Grote. Can you just act like a human boy for one minute here? Look at me like a person. You can't do it for more than a few seconds. Look at me like a human boy. And we're back on the Over Talking Podcast, joined once again by returning guest Patrick Kotner. And we're talking about Martin Schwartz Clifford. I'm just going to keep saying Martin Schwartz Clifford so people don't get confused by the big red dog. Patrick, we're going to put 30 seconds on the clock for you to describe for someone who's never heard or seen the movie Clifford yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. Ready, go. Uh, the movie stars two of Patrick's boys, Martin Short, Charles Grode, and Martin Short plays a 10-year-old boy named Clifford, who is a, uh, a child from hell. His father's Richard Kind. He really wants to go to a theme park called Dinosaur World in Los Angeles. They're on a plane. He makes them land in Los Angeles, and Richard Kind sends him off to go stay with Sounds his excellent. estranged brother, Charles Grodin, uh, uh, while Clifford really tries to make him Five. go to Dinosaur World. I think Four. that was too long, right? Am I Three. still going? Dude. Uh, chaos One. ensues. That's Time. it. That's pretty good. I think you got mo- pretty much all of it. I yeah. mean, there's not much plot beyond it. Yeah. <laughs> so. And usually we go with hilarity ensues, but I think that's our first chaos ensues. Chaos ensues. I mean, both are right. I like that even better. Yeah. Uh, uh, why? Well, go ahead, Steve. I I don't. I I actually wanted to talk about something completely different that's not related <laughs> to the movie. <laughs> Just what? really quick. Okay. Patrick, yes. you put on. Uh, a fantastic improv show called the Untitled Improv Project. Thank you so much. And as somebody who gets to spend time, you're chopping it up with them backstage, hanging mm-hmm. out in the green room. Mm-hmm. What is going through your head like moments before you are stepping on stage with your Paul F. Tompkins and stuff like that? Oh, sure. Great question. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not really a performer, you know? Right. And with this show, uh, for people who don't know, it's, it's a group of improvisers, and then a, a celebrity guest comes in to tell stories from their life, and then the improvisers do scenes based off of those stories. It's a lot like Ask Cat was over at UCB. But we realized – we didn't know how to open the show. We didn't know how to start the show early on, and I realized that the cast changes every single week pretty much based on people's availabilities. And I was like, well, we need someone to go out and tell all of the info about, like, what is this show? Here are the rules. Here are what you need to know, that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, shit, I'm the only person who's here every week. I guess I'm going to need to be that guy, which is fine. I don't love it, but it's fine. It's yeah. fun. Uh, and then I will usually grab one of the performers um, to come out and just chat with the audience for a little bit. So, I mean, look, there's people that I'm intimidated by. There's people that I just want to hang out with more and want to, like, make sure they have a good time. So I'm like, well, let's have them do a lot of stuff. So. Paul, I don't I don't really know Paul that well. He did the George Lucas talk show and we've done a couple things over the years, but like don't really know him that well. And it was one of those ones where I was like, I'm gonna get him to host with me. Like, this is what I want. I think he will like doing it. You know, yeah. like he likes crowd work, he likes that kind of stuff. So I'm nervous, but also we've done it like 20 times now. And uh if I'm bringing someone out like that, I know the crowd is excited to see him or to see Mitch from Doughboys or Arden Marine or or Lily Sullivan or whoever it is. I know they're excited to see them. So I sort of have the easy job of just being the straight man out there while they are being funny, which is kind of an ideal situation. You know, the pressure's off then. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun, but it's, uh, you know, it's scary. And it also depends, like, is it full? Is it, are there 20 people there? Are there 200 people there? Like, it's a very different vibe when there's 200 people there from when there's 45 people there, you know? Yeah. But the, the, when it's 200, it's usually easier because there's more of a chance someone is going to want to talk oh, versus totally, having yeah. to, like, pull teeth out of an audience who doesn't mm-hmm. want to interact, you know? Yeah. Um, that's a very long-winded answer. No, I appreciate it. Do do yeah. the nerves, like, stop as soon as you're out on stage? Or is it just, like, the entire time until you get to go hide in the back again? I think it depends. Some weeks are easier than others. 
I've, I've definitely gotten more used to it as the time has gone on. Um, so the nerves are definitely less than they were. And if it's someone that I know a little bit, um, the nerves are even less. But I usually try to get someone that I don't know but respect to do it. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. Or someone who has done it with me a couple times at this point. That will be the other one. And that's usually when the nerves are not there. Because I'm like, I know we can do it. We've done this before. But it's really a, it's a case-by-case thing. There's some weeks where I'm just like, oh, why am I so nervous this week? And then some weeks where it's like you forget that you're doing it until the curtain opens. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's the human brain for you. It'll just yeah. freak out for no reason. <laughs> and yeah. like, We've done this yeah. before. Why are you acting like this? And... Why are you so nervous, you weirdo? Yeah. yeah, it's really, it's weird, but it's fun. It's a fun show. And I really, uh, I like doing shows like that. I've been doing a lot of shows in that vein for almost, almost 10 years now. Like 2014, I started doing Ascot in New York. So it's Dang. been wow. every week for almost 10 years at this point, except for the, you know, year, year and a half for COVID stuff. But. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time. Are you still doing that with uh, Rat Scraps in New York as well? Are you still? Like, I'm not, helping... They're still doing the show, but yeah. uh, it's it would have been too much for me to you know so... take it while I'm in because I moved to LA back in December. Right. Try. Um, so they're they're still doing it. They're still killing it. Caveat's a great venue, and and whenever whenever we go and do a live George Lucas talk show in New York, that's usually where we do it. So they're uh, they got a good group over there. It's fun. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. You're just you're living out a, a dream of mine, getting to oh. share the stage with all those folks. And I, well, hang I mean, out that's truly why I'm doing it. Yeah, <laughs> just because I'm like, oh, I want this to happen. I I can make this happen. You know, uh, yeah. that's a big part of it. But it's yeah, fun. that's awesome. That's that smart. You can, you can actualize yeah. and realize that yeah. and actually live that. That's and then great. I get the fuck out of there by the time they're doing the improv. Yeah, I say I don't that's need cool. to do this. Yeah. You guys do this. I right. yeah. You don't have to do the sweaty part. Yeah, Yeah. it's a (laughs) win-win for everybody. I've been enjoying when it gets very, as an improv nerd myself, when it gets very meta, where they're like commenting on improv in the improv show. And I'm just like... Well, that's what I like about this show more than some of the other ones. And it's not a bad thing for other ones. I feel like this one is a lot looser Mm -hmm. than a lot of the other shows where like a lot of these people have not played together before or maybe don't even know each other. But I'm like, you're all funny and you're all good. So I think you will all it will work like just give it a second to figure out the dynamic between all of you but it's been it's been fun seeing who clicks and like these two people have never met before but they're in like four very funny scenes together so it's been you know it's the it's the dream version of that show yeah which is great it's fantastic keep, please yeah. keep doing it so i can stream I, it I, will, I will i will do my best <laughs> i will do my best people got to show up you got to get the butts in the seats that's the big that's, thing yeah you know? that's true <laughs> yeah all right, now I guess we can talk about the movie. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, uh, so Patrick, why did you choose Clifford? I mean, I love this movie. I, I only saw it during COVID for the first time. I know this is a movie that a lot of people my age are a little bit older. It was on repeat on HBO a lot um, when they were kids, so they saw it a lot in the 90s, but I missed it somehow, even though I'm like a huge Martin Short, huge Charles Grodin guy. Like, those are my, those are two of my guys. Like, if if you said name your guys, they would be in the top five guys. Um, so you're ready for Mark Marin when he asks. I'm ready. Yeah. Who are your guys? <laughs> boom, boom. Two. Done. End of story. Let, let me out of the gates. Um, but then we were talking about what we wanted to do for the show. And I looked over at my DVD shelf behind me, which you guys can see. The audience yeah. cannot see. Quite the extensive uh, collection. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, excuse me. I, I should say my Blu-ray shelf, yeah. not my DVD okay, shelf. Yeah. Okay, DVD good. shelf's all the way over Come here. On. You know, the Blu-ray shelf's right here. <laughs> and it was just the first movie my eyes, like, focused on. And I was like, well, we have to. That has there to be that. Yeah. It's a very fun movie. I saw it uh, in December at Dynasty Typewriter, where we do the improv show. They showed it, and Martin Short was there, and Richard Kind was there, and uh, uh, Paul Flaherty was there, and Tom Sharpling uh, did the you know Q and A version of it. And Sharpling owns the red suit that Clifford wears during <laughs> no the, the in laws' birthday party. Like wow, you know, the beating him with the bread scene, all that. He owns that suit, and he had it on a mannequin on the stage, and it was it was amazing. <laughs> Mitch incredible. Hurwitz That's did the awesome. intro for it. It was really fun. It was really cool um but i just like the movie and i feel like a lot of people haven't seen it so it's kind of hard to track down sometimes i don't know where you guys saw it it's on youtube for free oh is it oh that's right 
<laughs> I uh, it sort of was floating in and out of HBO Max for a while, mm. uh, and then it went away, and I couldn't find it anywhere. And I was like, I'll spend the thirty dollars on the bare bones Blu-ray that was released. <laughs> like it's got a trailer on it, and I think that's it because they were like, we're not putting any effort into this. What are we thinking? No, no one's making do? special features yeah. for yeah. Clifford. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is a shame. It's a real shame. Yeah, I'm sure that that event that you were at must have been really interesting. And yeah. you probably know all the answers to my trivia questions for probably. later. So I'm excited <laughs> for what you, it was definitely goes. something where they were all like, Are you sure you want to talk about this? Like that was the whole vibe of the night where they're like, Do you guys care Clifford about this? Really? really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. CJ, had you seen this before? I have no. not. It's yeah, it's been on my list for a while because I I know it is like big in the comedy scene because it's it's starring two heavy hitters and right and it's just yeah it's a kind of a ridiculous premise and and just a ridiculous movie and mm-hmm. but yeah no had never seen it before I had been on my list for a bit but I loved it so I'm gonna start off the bat or right off the bat saying Martin Short is not my guy Ooh, I don't know okay. uh, hot take hot take okay. I don't usually like his his whole stick, yeah, but sure. I will say, uh, I actually like this movie. Yeah, so, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did not I went into see it. that coming. No, I know. I went into it because CJ gave me the basic premise of the movie yeah. earlier on before I watched it. Yeah, it's like Martin Short's a ten year old boy. You're probably <laughs> not going to like it, yeah. knowing me. But I don't know. I don't know what it was about it, but I think knowing that, yeah, setting my expectations. Yeah, it landed for me. I don't know what it was. Yes. There is this is a movie where you'll either love it or you'll despise it. Like yeah. those are the two right. options for this movie. Right. Uh, oh, I'm so happy that you liked it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it wow, was so happy. I, it really surprised me. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I think within the first minute or two, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna love this. Like it's yeah. Steve, Mar- it's older Steve Martin. Martin God, Short. I see, I'm doing no, it again. Come on. Come come on. on. I, can Short. I just call him Steve Martin Short, and then that sure. way my Do bases are covered? Okay. You get it in there, I guess. You yeah. could just say Clifford. Clifford, thank you. Yeah. Clifford. Yeah. yeah. So this dog comes in, and he's really big, <laughs> and then he's red. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I guess to to paint the picture for any listeners who have no idea what we're talking about, have never heard of the movie. Uh, it starts with a the year twenty fifty, <laughs> and. Clifford is like a, a pastor or a priest or some, and works at some like boys ed- educational school something. Like a home for wayward boys. I yeah. Think. yeah, yeah, yeah. Trouble and, and it's, The whole movie is it's him recounting this story of when he was a ten year old boy, which I had did not see coming. And it starts out with like a a fairy tale intro. We see like a title screen, and oh, it's, it's like. This is one of so those bizarre. stories. Yeah, I was just like, what mm-hmm. is this? It, it, there's like, yeah, that the fairy tale intro and then the wraparound, which, by the way, was filmed three years after the main movie was filmed because it was like canned, basically. <laughs> yeah, they, do you want me to elaborate? Oh, go for it. Uh, yeah, yeah. No so basically, they shot the movie, the production company, the, I don't remember who it was, if it was Orion. Orion? Was it Orion? Yeah. Yeah. Orion got all bogged down in like legal issues and they were like shutting down basically. They're like, we don't have any more money. So this movie just sat on a shelf for like four years. And then when it was going to be released in 1994, they were like, this movie's insane. You need some like <laughs> quote unquote happy wraparound, like, yeah. you know, uh, something to like actually fill out this like story. So it's not just him as a child. And they went back and they filmed that and it was, uh, but they had a lot of trouble because the studio was like, what is this? Like, what (laughs) is this movie? Fair question. I think. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Do you guys think it would have been better or worse without the wraparound? I think it helps set the tone for the, what you're going to see. Cause the part that got me like in the first minute or two is he's walking and something falls and hits him on the head and it's like a football or something. You're like, oh, well, he's at this boys thing. That's probably a common occurrence. And then like he gets hit with a suitcase and you're like, what's happening here? And then he gets hit with a boy, <laughs> a human <laughs> boy falls out of it. It's like, oh, OK, we're I, I get this. I love this. I'm so excited to watch the rest of the movie. So I think it sort of helps set that for you. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, his makeup's very wonky in that yeah. scene. It, <laughs> Not the greatest. It's very, not uh, 
I last night I watched this and I was watching some Twin Peaks and spoiler for a uh, 30 year old Twin Peaks. But there are episodes where they show Agent Cooper 25 years in the future and he has a very similar makeup style mm. where it's like they're trying to do old man stuff, but it just looks like not great. It doesn't look great. Dried cake. Yeah. 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 Like it's exactly. falling off. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think you need it. I think you need something like that. Yeah. Just yeah. uh to sort of ground it in some sort of weird reality. I do like that Martin Short is like 10 years older than he's supposed to be as the old man currently, and he looks better than he does there. <laughs> like, he's oh, supposed wow, to be. Yeah. If you take the the ages, you're like, oh, he's yeah. like 65 uh-huh. maybe, and then you're like, oh, Martin Short is 77 or whatever he is now, and you're like, he looks great. <laughs> he looks great. Yeah, I totally agree. I I can't imagine watching the movie without some sort of introduction to martin short being in it and not yeah. just being thrown into martin short's a 10 year old boy <laughs> like yeah. that would be wild but yeah. also maybe awesome i don't know <laughs> i could go either way I don't know. it's got a vibe of a lot of those early 90s kids movies where it's just like wacky crazy insane mm-hmm. and i feel like i do think that helps ground it because you do you do when you see older clifford you're like Oh, it's nice to see him like this. You know what I mean? Like he grows up mm-hmm. and he, he becomes a productive member of society. And like, it's sort of like, it it feels like a different character, but it's also like, oh no, he, he has learned the error of his ways yeah. and he has changed and is trying to help others. And I, I do like that a little bit, even though I do want a sequel, you know, <laughs> I do feel like those sort of uh, make it hard to make a sequel. Yeah. Just get, um, just get him back. Get Ben get Savage back. back. Yeah. Get, yeah. Tell him another story. Yeah. Steam Virgin still happen. around. Yeah, yeah. We can do it. Little baby Ben Savage. Uh huh. Yeah. He, when he, when he fell out of that window, you know, boy, I really met world there. Huh? Oh, oh no. boy. Can I leave? Don't, don't leave, Patrick. Don't leave. <laughs> How do I get out of here? <laughs> so, one of the things Clifford, uh, as a 10 year old boy, uh, is obsessed with is going to Dinosaur World, which looks fucking awesome <laughs> the <laughs> biggest amusement park known to yes, man yes <laughs> when they finally show it much later in the movie uh it is the coolest amusement park i have ever seen and yeah. i want to go to it and yeah. i don't blame him for being so obsessed with wanting to go to it <laughs> yeah I, one of my ebay alerts uh because every so often something will show up is map painting and every so often people will be selling like map paintings from movies they worked on 30 years ago that like no one cares about and my dream, the dream is for Dinosaur World to show up. Yes. I'm like, how much I will go spend whatever you need me to spend. I'm like, it must be out there somewhere in someone's like storage locker. And mm-hmm. I want it. All yeah. I want is that Dinosaur World map painting. So that some, would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, I had a question for the both of you. So Clifford, as a as a form of torture, is being sent on a roller coaster ride over and over again. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I feel like at the start, without picking up the speed, I'd probably be okay going a few times yeah. around. Like it seemed yeah, sure. like one the longest roller coaster ever. Yeah. <laughs> it's it was huge. so involved. <laughs> it's like the mine car chase in Temple of Doom. Like that's how long right. it yeah. felt. Like where you're like, he's been going at this for like three minutes at yeah. this point. But there's yeah. like there's like two breaks in the middle yeah, of right. it too, yeah. so it's not even that bad. Yeah. For some reason, then you take a ray gun and you shoot a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> And cause damage on the dinosaur. Yeah. yeah. Like when he shot it, there's like a black like burn mark on his yeah. chest. I'm like, it's not sustainable for a part yeah. for the <laughs> no. it's a little toy ray gun with like a laser scope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel I feel like I could make it a couple times around and then yeah, yeah maybe you just get bored, right? Do you guys sure. would you last That's a little re- little repetitive, but yeah, I could I could do probably ten times, maybe. Yeah. It looks yeah. like the best ride ever. Yeah. It know. it really uh I watched it the day the day before I watched this movie again for this, I was at Disneyland. Oh. Like we went there and Perfect. the person I was watching with we both went and we're watching it and we're like, oh, this feels like a legitimate ride. Like this would have been one of the better rides we rode at Disneyland <laughs> if we had gone. Uh but no, I I think I could definitely do it. There's no flips, there's no like major drops, you know, yeah. it feels fairly tame, yeah. except for the fact that he's turned it up to what a ludicrous speed or whatever he calls yeah. it, and it's just right. going really fast. Yeah. But also terrifying. Like when he's hanging off of the dinosaur, like yeah. it's like <laughs> hanging off the track, you're like, why did you even build it like this? Like, why was this even an option? Uh, uh 
I did think so. Yeah, the the coaster kind of falls apart if or or uh, Clifford's basically hanging, almost going to die, get eaten by a dinosaur. And yeah. Charles Grodin's solution is like, well, why don't I jump on the thing he's hanging from? <laughs> it's like that yeah. wouldn't have been my first go to to try yeah. to save somebody. Yeah, the the cart's barely hanging on, and let's throw a fully grown man at it now and see if it can sustain that weight. Yeah. I don't know; it doesn't quite add up, but yeah, no. But you know what? In the end, it worked. Yeah, you got to so, think quick. Yeah. Who are we to say? You know, maybe it was a good idea. I guess so. Um, I, I want to ask the both of you: What's your favorite prank or slash evil thing mm. that Clifford does to uh, Uncle Martin? Mm-hmm. Good question. I disagree. The one my brain jumps to immediately is, and that that is where the line is sort of drawn, is him exploding the architecture-like yes. set mm. in front of his business presentation. Because that's like, oh, this kid has got explosives involved now. This is, <laughs> or like is yeah. setting it on fire somehow. Why, why did he take ownership for that at that point? I, I don't understand. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, it was me. Like, but it. Oh, I'm sorry. There was something you didn't understand in this movie. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We can move on. Good point. <laughs> um, uh, what was your favorite thing? The thing that always makes me laugh so hard is my name is Martin Daniels. I have a bomb. Just like him uh, recutting his uh, <laughs> answering, answering machine, machine yeah. to fit with the conversation that they had. And it just sounds perfect. Like, yeah. It sounds so good. It makes me yes. laugh really hard. There's so many things that make me laugh. Like, just like full on giggle for a long time oh, yeah. in this movie. Uh, and that is, that's definitely one of them. I, I rewound a couple parts cause they were making me laugh. Yeah. The one that I think the, the few clips I have seen of this movie is also the part that like made me laugh the most, which is towards the end where Charles Grodin sits Clifford down and asks, can you just act like a human boy for one minute? Act like yes. a person. <laughs> And then it cuts to Clifford and he's just like doing a minute of making different faces, trying to like be a boy. It's so funny. It's like, they're just having a blast. Just... Yeah. yeah. That scene is like heat comedy. It's just like, oh, yeah. two dudes who are the best at this. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Ken, no offense. I know you don't like him. Two dudes who are the best at this that are just I get like, it. I get it. yeah, I know. I know who are, uh, just being extremely funny in their own specific ways. Yeah, uh, and it just meshes. It meshes so well. Yeah, yeah. they played really well off each other. And yeah. I read that that scene, scene specifically, they like improv ninety percent of it. Yeah, yes. yeah. A lot of it. I think it was also the audition scene that they, or like the the screen test scene that they oh. did the test screen. Video. Yeah. I think it was also part of that because I think we watched it at the event, if I remember right. I think oh, we gotcha. watched the screen test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there is. I think it's around that same time too where. Clifford asks if like life gets better essentially, or if it gets easier. And Charles Grodin says like, not really. No. And you can, <laughs> you can see Martin short breaking for a second there that they left. Him. Like he smiles and then puts his hand over his mouth yeah. to try to like cover. Cause yeah. I don't think he was, uh, my guess is that was also improvised. Like that probably yeah. was not the line. <laughs> it didn't seem like the actual line. <laughs> that part oh. got me too. It, yeah. it feels like they're, they're, partially breaking in most of their scenes together yeah. which i very much enjoy absolutely absolutely charles groden kept it together though i feel like he's he was, you uh, he was are you guys groden boys do you guys have groden movies that you like or is this an uh an i intro did to not groden. even know who he was before this wow. movie so yeah That's intro cool. to groden for me okay i have not seen him in many movies however i think i've watched almost all of his letterman appearances over yeah. the years the I've best. been watching those like compilations yeah. on YouTube and I was just like, oh, they're just having a blast to get like this yeah. guy gets it exactly. Like he knows yeah. exactly what to do as a guest. His whole thing, Ken, when he would go on talk shows was to just be an asshole. Basically, he was like, I don't want to be on these appearances. I don't want to talk to you. I don't like you. Like that was his Carson and his Letterman thing. Uh, nice. I was if just for anyone listening, if you're looking for Grodin, uh, uh, you know, external reading, if you want to go see more Grodin stuff, Heartbreak Kid, the Elaine May movie, uh, I think it's on YouTube. Uh, another one that's like kind of hard to find, but it's so goddamn funny. He's great in The Great Muppet Caper. He's great in Ishtar. He's great in Midnight Run with De Niro. And then, I mean, there's a bunch more, but those are those are the big the big Grodin ones right there. 
going to be adding nice. those to my list and slowly yeah. make my way yeah. through them. He's in the Great Muppet Caper. Oh, my God. He is. He's the bad guy. i to watch it. He's the bad oh. guy. Yeah. Nice. But also Miss Piggy's love interest. Oh, snap. She likes a bad boy. There's a great, also, sorry, another thing. There's a great, in maybe 2011, 2012, he wrote a piece for Vulture about, quote unquote, the behind the scenes account of what his love affair with Miss Piggy was like. And he just like, he treats it like it's a real thing that happened. And it's so, so, so funny. (laughs) Oh, wow. Um, Yeah. He also, he had a talk show on CNBC in the 90s. And it was just like a real dry, like you talk about the issues and like the homeless population uh, problem in Los Angeles or the OJ trial or like it's just like there's only a couple episodes of it online and it's fascinating and I wish I could find it all because I just they're crazy. And he just like really it's a real serious CNBC talk show uh, that just happens to be hosted by him. Yeah. Wow. He wrote a book too, right? Doesn't he have a book? He's written a bunch of books. Yeah. He wrote like four or five books. Yeah. All right, we'll pick one of those up. Yeah. All right. Well, are you two ready for some trivia? Yes. Absolutely. I am yes. ready to lose. All right. Probably. Uh, it's time for. Hey, did you do know that? Uh, this is the part of the show where we pit our guests and CJ head to head to see who knows the most about what we watch. Patrick, CJ, are you two ready? Yeah. Ready. All right. CJ's ready to lose. First question during filming. How did they figure out the height difference between Martin Short and everyone else? Did they effectively shrink Martin Short by making him crouch down or some other thing? Or did they effectively grow everyone else by putting him on stilt or something else like that? I mean, I believe maybe, maybe CJ like, should go first. Then, yeah. Because yeah. I feel like Patrick <laughs> knows the yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead, CJ. I, well, there is one scene where he's like frolicking across a train platform. So I assume for stuff like that, they just made everyone grow maybe hired super tall people he's already kind of a a short shorter guy but then i did notice there's scenes where like him laying down you just flat out don't see his lower half so you can't like but i'm gonna say the growing one okay patrick i believe everyone was like standing on boxes and standing up higher weren't they yeah that's correct yeah Yeah. they had everyone standing in boxes and then like oversized props around them too yeah Make I think we're both favorite. right. We're both yeah. right there. Yeah, You're right. You both get the point. Points. Yes. Yeah, right. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Maybe going forward, CJ goes first. Let's yeah. just make that a rule. <laughs> fine. That's I just fine. realized Patrick knows everything. All right. Next question. <laughs> True or false? The writers of this film were so embarrassed by the final cut that they used synonyms in the credits. Pseudonyms. I'm sorry. Not synonyms. Wow. I was going to get you on a technicality there. I was going to say false, <laughs> <laughs> but you pseudonyms. <laughs> That's, I mean, the fact that you're asking it probably means it's true. So I'll go with that. Yeah, I think that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I thought that was that's, hilarious. They, no one really had any faith in this, huh? No, not really. All right. Next question. How old was Martin Short when he filmed the scenes as young Clifford? Oh, gosh. I'm not going to take the time to try to do the yeah, math. Just, just whoever's wild, closest. A wild guess here. That's the point. Yeah, yeah, you go first. 37? Okay. I'm going to say 40. 37 is correct, actually. Whoa. Wow. He, that's exactly right. Yeah. Wow. He, wow. Was, he was 40 when he films the um, priest scenes. Gotcha. Okay. So you kind of yeah. get it, uh, but. No, no, give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Yeah. The only time I'm taking the lead. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if that'll last. We'll see. How old was Charles Grodin when he played Uncle Martin? 52. I'm going to say 54. Yeah, you're closer, Patrick. It was 55. Yeah. Wow. All right, my my lead was short-lived. Sorry. Okay. Um, I think Patrick will know this next one, at least because I read a Vulture article about the event he was at, and they talked about it a lot. So here we go. What 1956 movie involving an evil child inspired the creation of Clifford? 1956. CJ's not going to get this one because (laughs) he doesn't like horror movies and won't get this. Especially that old. Yeah. The one where, uh, wow, well, I'm blanking on it. The, nope. the possession. Not going to get it. The priest and he pukes nope. green. No, nope. the exorcist. <laughs> Not the exorcist. the exorcist. Okay. Patrick? It's called The Bad Seed. The Bad Seed is correct. Yeah. And I think the girl from The Bad Seed is in Clifford. Oh, oh. no way. I believe the Do girl you know was like, which yeah, one? I, can, I can look it up. Let me look. That would be awesome. That's crazy. That also, knowing that before watching the movie is kind of maybe what put me in the right yeah, 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 to like understand what they were going for. Hmm. I don't know. 
I think her name's Patty McCormick. Oh, yes. She's, uh, shoot, where did that go? So she played a passenger on the plane who said that his behavior would wreak havoc, but it was cut. Oh. So that's what her. Yeah. Just full on smacking people on the plane. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is him going down the aisle, just hitting people with both arms is really that funny. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next question. Uh, this one is first person to shout out the correct answer gets the point. So get ready. Uh, Steven Spielberg reached out to Martin Short to ask set design questions after seeing an early version of Clifford. What movie was he in pre-production on? Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is correct. <laughs> he I didn't like the set I don't design of, that. of Dinosaur World, apparently. I love that. And wow. wanted to <laughs> learn a little more about I that. I love that. Dang. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, that was an sure. IMDb trivia. It yeah. sounds made up, but yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. You well, it's point. a theme. I mean, it's a dinosaur theme theme park, you know? It's like it's, yeah. yeah. It also sounds like someone who's funny and wants to make up a trivia. <laughs> <but sure. laughs> All right. Where are we at on points, CJ? Uh, Patrick is in the lead with uh, five to my three. Oh. All right. This is the final question. Uh, what is the Rotten Tomatoes tomato meter score for Clifford in percentage? Closest without going over. For those who don't know, this is the critic score on Rotten Tomatoes. Patrick, since you're in the lead, you'll go first. Okay. I think it's 13. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, Siege. Oh, Good luck. boy. Usually I'm able to say like $1 and get an easy answer, but that's so <laughs> low <laughs> that it's hard <laughs> without going over. Jeez. Ah. <laughs> uh. I don't know what the smart play here is. <laughs> I, I guess 14. I'll get, I'm trying to give it some credit. Nope. Uh, yeah, Patrick was right on the money. I don't know what you do in that case, but uh, yeah, Patrick, yeah. obviously you're our winner. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I only know that because I was looking up someone in the cast and Googled the name wow. earlier, and it says 13% right there. That was the only reason why I knew that. 13. I'm not Yikes. a lunatic. <laughs> Just as I've memorized. Uh-huh. I saw that before I, I watched the movie, and I, I was like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I didn't know. But, okay, so here's just a, a not for points or anything, but what is the audience score in Rotten Tomatoes? Ooh. That's got, like, this is, I think, one of the, the cult classic in the comedy world. So I'm I'm assuming at least in the, like, mid-60s. Okay. I'm going to say, I don't know. I'm going to say 48. Ye of little faith. Yeah, CJ, you're close. 67%. Wow. Okay. Like, wow. Actually, most people like this movie. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just That's critics crazy. hate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's find out what we thought about it because it's time for our ratings. You've estimated. We know you've been waiting. So now it's time to hear our ratings. Uh, Patrick, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you mm. rate Martin Short's Clifford for you? For me, it's pretty high. I think there's, for a movie that came out then, there's only like two things in it that don't hold up to modern uh, taste of jokes. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? There's like two Mm -hmm. jokes where I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah. So I will give it, I'll give it an eight. Yeah. 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 Pretty solid. Yeah. Nice. Uh, CJ? For me, yeah, I think... I think an eight, I, I'm going to go in the handholding club. I think an eight as well. I checked it in the letterbox. I give it four out of five stars, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, my review was something along the lines of, if you like Martin Short's whole thing, then this movie is for you. Because <laughs> I think if you're on board with that, you're going to love this movie. I, really, it's the movie that like gets him the most, I yeah. think, out of all the movies. like It's the one that like distills him down into like the most Martin Shortiest Martin Short. Yeah, it yeah, lets really? him like thrive. I think so. Huh. Because see, okay, now I also avoid Martin Short movies, so yeah. maybe I don't know everything, but there's this one shtick he does that I'm not even going to attempt to uh, impersonate. In the movie but, or in general? No, not in not in Clifford, though. Yeah, I don't know. In, in other things I've seen him in, he's extra is maybe sure. the best way to put it. Sure. And I don't think he, I don't think he did that in this movie. But, okay. Okay. Um, but I don't know. I didn't think it. he was extra enough in this movie. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is strange to say, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. He was he was definitely a lot, but he he was uh, you know cold yeah. and calculating at times too. So that was interesting. Uh-huh. A little more grounded. I, yeah, oh. Clifford's a very grounded movie, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, That's the word I would use. Yeah, right. Uh, for me, I would give Clifford 
not as high as you guys. I mean, you know, Martin Short's on it. But oh. uh, I'll give it a seven, like I wow. had, which is surprising. Like Great, I never yes. would have thought I would have given it so high. But yeah, I I, I actually thought it was fun. I don't know. I truly thought good. you were going to hate this kid. <laughs> that yeah. was my expectation. Me too. Me too. For sure. There's uh there's a story in Martin Short's autobiography that he wrote a couple years ago where he said he was on a plane in the mid nineties and he sees Nicolas Cage, who had just won uh the Oscar. And he was so nervous to go up to him and he went out he eventually like worked up the courage, goes over to him and was like, You were so good in that movie, like you really deserved the Oscar and he goes I wore out my VHS tape of Clifford because I watched the talk to me like a human boy scene too many times and was laughing so hard. <laughs> it's like his wow. favorite movie. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. God. I'm I, I could see myself rewatching this in in the future because it's it's just fun to some to throw on. The one the one uh thing I was a little bummed at was the the only three people I knew in it were are on the movie poster. Mm-hmm. So then when the credits come up and I saw Richard Kind and it's established mm-hmm. that like mm-hmm. that's his dad, I was like, oh hell yeah, this is yeah. gonna I'm, this is yeah. gonna be amazing. But yeah. then you only get like five to ten minutes and then yeah, it's like, oh, bummer. We should also say them. Mary Steen Merchant very good in this movie, yes. very funny in right. this movie. I don't think we've really talked about her. Uh, she's a very good uh, uh, straight woman in it and just a good pair for Groden, which is not something I would have guest but she's yeah. really good at just like seeping into the part and like making making the straight woman thing work in insane comedies you know yeah you need that yeah. grounded character to make all yeah. the other people look as ridiculous yeah yeah absolutely well before we wrap up uh patrick any final thoughts on clifford it's a good movie <laughs> couldn't have said it better myself yeah that's that's sure absolutely well thank you for joining us it's been an absolute pleasure where can people find you you can uh, follow me on Twitter at Patrick Kotner. For, uh, who knows how long we'll be there, you know, but uh, I'm <laughs> yeah, there for now. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm on Blue Sky, too. Same thing. Full name uh, on Instagram. Just my last name at Kotner. You can watch Untitled Improv Project if you're in L.A. or if you want to stream it, you can do that. Or and if you follow me on stuff, you could see any of the other multitude of projects uh i work on i I do the george lucas talk show which will be in edinburgh for edinburgh fringe festival in august we'll be there the entire month so if anybody lives over there and is listening to this uh wants to come see a very silly talk show or a very silly play featuring characters from that talk show we will be there and it's going to be very dumb i'm so excited i assume you guys will sometime in late august or september talk about that experience i, I have and to I, imagine so yeah I can't wait to hear how it went maybe not late august because i think we will need time away from whatever the hell it's going to be <laughs> that's before fair, yeah. we feel comfortable talking about it yeah it's gonna be fun though yeah that's yeah. amazing another yeah. like bucket list item for myself yeah. is to go to the edinburgh french festival so yeah incredible it'll be fun awesome well, thank you again for joining us. CJ, what do we have to plug at the end here? You can follow us on all the things at Overtalking Pod. Uh, email us like actor Wayne Knight did at overtalkingpod at gmail.com. Uh, not not us real. USA Still not real. People don't write it. I don't know. I, re- I read an email that said that it was from, <laughs> it was from so him. Excited. So I don't know. No, I got no. so excited. <laughs> uh, I really hate doing this part. Please don't make me do it. CJ. Come on. They're here. Uh, oh no. Oh no, they're here. Oh, it's it's the bit that we started five years ago that's still going. Uh it's the overtalking overlords. Uh they've shown up just like they do at the end of every episode to remind me to remind you. If you like the show, please go on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and rate and review. Your reviews are what help people find this podcast. Also, we spend enough money in advertising. So if you like the show, please tell a friend and spread the word. We would really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And as we say at the end of every single episode, act like a person. Bye. 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 This episode of the Overtalking Podcast was produced by Ken and CJ, edited by CJ. This week's special guest was Patrick Kotner from the Untitled Improv Project and the George Lucas Talk Show. Music by Justin Peters. Logo by Nate Richards. Check out Nate's work on Instagram at Nate Richards Designs. 